Today, we're building an APRS fill-in digipeter, so please keep watching for more. Hi, I'm Michael, KB9VBR, your host for Ham Radio q and I'm on a mission to inspire and educate the amateur radio community, so if this is your first time watching, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Well, I've done a couple of videos on APRS, or the Automated Packet Reporting System. APRS is a tactical, real-time communication system to share location information and short messages. It can be really handy for tracking vehicles and other assets during events like parades, rides, walkathons, uh, things like that. But if you're also using a low-powered APRS tracker, like this handheld radio, uh, you may not be able to reliably get into the wide area digipeter. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can use a spare two meter radio and a TNC to build a fill-in digipeter that can be deployed during special events. First off, if you're new to APRS, I recommend that you watch my introduction video so you have a better understanding of the automated packet reporting system. Links to that video and another one on path settings and protocols can be found in the video descriptions below. To start off, uh, the fill-in digipeter basically consists of a TNC. I'm using the Cantronics KPC-3, although you can use any TNC2 compatible unit. A two meter mobile radio, uh, this is the one I've got, is, an, is a Hamfest find that I picked up quite a few years ago, and a control cable from the TNC to the radio. The instruction manual for the TNC will have the pinouts for common transceivers, and there are also websites online that have the instructions for building a TNC to transceiver cable. For portable use, I usually plug the whole thing into a 12 volt AGM battery. To program the TNC, you're gonna need about seven commands to turn it into a digipeter. And we're gonna set this digipeter up to only retransmit the packets that have wide 1-1 in the first position of its path protocol. To do that, we're gonna to have to hook the TNC up to a computer and a terminal program. So I'm using the real term terminal program that runs on a Windows PC and there's others available. Uh, since the computer only has a USB port, I also have a USB to serial adapter. Uh, mine's got the little blinking lights on it so I can tell if it's um, operating correctly and I know that, you know that the connection is being made. To set up the TNC, Start up the terminal program and set it for the baud rate and port your TNC is on. Most TNCs interface with the computer at 9600 baud, no stop bits, eight data bits, and one parity bit. If your settings are correct, you'll see the TNC's welcome message on your terminal screen when you turn the power on. Now for the settings. I have a copy of the settings in the video description, but your first setting will, will be to set my call to your call sign and then set my alias to wide 1-1. The my alias string is the path designator that the TNC will listen for so that we only want it to digipeat wide 1-1 packets. Next, set your B text or beacon text. This is the latitude and longitude icon and station type of your beacon. The latitude and longitude should be in degrees, minutes, and decimal minutes. Change them for your location, but leave the rest of the string the same. Next, tell it to beacon once every 10 minutes. With the Cantronics, you'll use the command beacon every 60. Then we finish up with a couple of housekeeping commands. Set the unproto to APN382. This is a designator for the Cantronics models. HID to off. And then to make it to digipeat, set digi to on. That's it, the unit is ready to go. It will remember the commands when you turn the power off. So you can disconnect the serial cable and put the TNC back into the box. So the way the digipeter works is it's gonna to listen to the APRS channel and if it receives a packet with wide 1-1 as its first designator, it's gonna digipeat that packet. The packet will then be heard by the wide digi and retransmitted a second time. As you can see, uh, using my HT in the shack here, my packets are being retransmitted by the fill-in digi and transmitted a second time by the wide digi. So how well does it work? Well, as a test, I turned on the fill-in digi, put the HT on my belt, and took the dog for a walk around the neighborhood. While the fill-in digi did tra retransmit every packet, enough of them got through to an eye gate so that I was able to track my location on a map. I'd call that a success. So the fill-in digipeter is something you don't want to use all the time as too many fill-ins can degrade the APRS network. 
But if you're doing an event and want to use APRS, these fill-ins can provide extra coverage for weak areas, especially if you're using low-powered trackers. So that, is a, that, in a nutshell, is how you set up a fill-in digipeter for those APRS weak spots. Have any questions and comments? Can you think of any good uses for the fill-in digi? I'd love to hear it. Please leave those in the uh, comment area down below. For more articles and information, check out my blog at www.jpol-antenna.com. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a big thumbs up to show that you liked it. And also check out some of the other videos recommended alongside here too. You may find some of those interesting. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Pressing subscribe is your way to be notified when future videos are released. Well, that's it. I'm Michael, KB9VBR. Have a great day and 73.